Welcome to MATLAB. This will be a basic overview of the interface of the software, as well as how to use MATLAB as a calculator. So the first thing that we notice when we open up MATLAB, as I've done here, is that there are four different windows within MATLAB. The first window, in the middle, is the command window. The command window is our primary form of interaction with the software. We can input commands into the command window, assign variables, and receive outputs. For an example, we can enter 4 plus 4 and press enter and receive the answer, which is 8. Furthermore, we can assign a value to a variable such as x by setting x equal to 10 and pressing enter. We'll go over more of the details behind these command window inputs later. So now we can move on to the next window on the upper right, which is the workspace. The workspace stores the variables that we assign using the command window and allows us to quickly see the values of the variables within the system. For an example, we just assigned the value of 10 to the variable x, and now in the workspace we can see that x has a value of 10. So now if we want to clear what just occurred in our command window or clear the variables from our workspace, we can type CLC and this clears everything in the command window. So now the command window is empty. If we want to delete all the variables from our workspace, we can delete them one by one by right clicking on them and pressing delete, or we can just type clear in the command window and press enter and that will clear the workspace. The third window on the lower right is the command history window. The command history window stores previous user inputs to the command window. We can use the command history window to refer back to previous work done in MATLAB, and we can even drag and drop from the command window for uh, old commands and then execute them. So if we drag and drop clear, and we can still press enter, or if we drag and drop four plus five, press enter, it'll do four plus five. Lastly, the fourth window on the left is the current folder window. We can navigate the current folder window much like any folder system within a basic operating system. The current folder window displays all the scripts, functions, and files and subfolders present in the current folder, which is kind of like the directory that MATLAB works within. And you can run files or scripts or functions in the current folder window by right-clicking on them, pressing run. You can also open them up for editing in most cases by double clicking on them and then this will open up the uh, editor which is taking a while there it is so now that we've gone over the basic interface of MATLAB we can move on to using MATLAB as a calculator MATLAB is a very capable scalar calculator and it can do addition subtraction multiplication and division without any problems so if we want to add two numbers we can type 4 plus 5 and then press enter. Notice that this sets ANS equal to 9. This is because the default variable that any output is set to if you don't assign your input to an output is ANS and ANS will change depending on the operation that you do. So for an example if we now do 4 minus 5 and press enter ANS changes to 1, negative 1 and we notice that both in the command window and in the workspace. So multiplication is pretty similar, but let's set our multiplication input equal to a variable now. So we can set x equal to 4 times 5. And this will set x equal to the product of 4 and 5, which is 20. You can also do calculations on variables that you've already assigned. So for an example, if we want to set y equal to x divided by 4, then as we expect, y will be equal to 5. So those are the four scalar operations that we can do within MATLAB. And you can also raise things to the power. So four to the fifth power can be computed. And uh, that's basically most of the scalar calculation part of MATLAB. And for order of operations, we can type help precedence. And this will give you a list of the priorities of the MATLAB operator so that you can see what should go first. Order of operations within MATLAB are very similar to order of operations elsewhere in the mathematical world, so you shouldn't have too much difficulty. But if you do, 
you can type help precedence and clarify some of your uh, understandings. Next, we can move on to some more advanced functions, such as the square root function, which is represent SQRT. So you can take the square root of a number, in this case, 100, or a trigonometric function, such as sine. So we can take sine of 3. And in this case, 3 is in radians. So it would be like the sine of 3 radians, not degrees. You can use degrees if you type sine d, and then if we do like 90, it'll give us 1. Um, notice that after every function name, like sqrt, I'm putting the input inside parentheses. So that's how you generally use functions or enter inputs into functions within MATLAB. There's also the natural log function, log, which takes the natural log of a number, or ln, as you might know it as. There's also log base 10, which is log 10. And there's the absolute value function, which takes the absolute value of the input. And lastly, there is the function that allows you to raise e to a number. So e raised to the first power would be e. So that way we can see the value for e. Also note that MATLAB does store a uh, short version of pi within its memory, and we can just type pi and press enter to access that. So it's 3.1416, and then some of the numbers are cut off because of the display system that I've implemented on my version of MATLAB.